We do have some kind of screening that we do. Um, our education requirements are pretty basic. I can't remember. I think it's just high school. Maybe a little more. I always forget that. So that's kind of how, how we do it. Um, just two seconds of my background. Before I, before I worked at TLC and CUNY and DOT, um, I worked at the city, the Office of Management and Budget for the city for 16 years. So I kind of have a good finance background, and that's kind of probably why I'm here today. At least why my boss hired me. For, I don't know why I'm here today, but um, it's an existential question that we can always ask later. Um, but I have kind of a good finance and, and general government administration. So that's kind of my background. I do not, you know, I'm not a, a taxi expert other than I've taken them a lot and black card, you know, we've, we've all used them. So as a city, New York City resident, um, that's kind of my experience. Before, before I came to TLC, I didn't know if the, how many, I mean, I didn't know how much a medallion was worth. Eh, kind of, but whatever, I think everyone knows. Questions, please. In the, um, Jim, where do you want to? Sure. Um, what would the salary range be for these officers? Union constrained, it's $40,000. That's what we started with. They get over time. It's $40,000 for a 35-hour week. Um, our enforcement people work four days at uh, eight and three-quarter hour tours, I guess. And then, you know, they get some differentials. They get some overtime. Probably the average officer starting out probably makes around 45-ish. So it's not a whole lot of money in a big city. Um, but it has health insurance, which is in the United States, unlike you know, Canada. Um, you have it. We don't. We're working towards it, um, whether you agree we should or not. But we're working towards it. So health insurance is probably worth $10,000 a year if you're working in the private sector. And we also have a pension plan. And if you, if you uh, become a special patrolman in New York City, you can, the pension plan allows you to retire a little earlier than a normal civil servant would retire. So you do have some sort of pension benefits that you would get as coming to work for us. Not as generous as being a police officer or a firefighter in New York City. Um, obviously, they, they actually, police and fire, uh, start starting salaries are not that different from ours. It's just the growth potential is, is not as good. So, yes. Yeah, hi, I'm an enforcement officer in the city of Toronto. I've been doing so for about 15 years. Okay. I um, just want a quick question. You had mentioned that taxi drivers are always charged um, if they don't take people to a particular location based on what you say, gender or race. In our Toronto Municipal Code, we have provisions that actually give them a way out if they're previously known to them, if the passengers are unruly or obnoxious, um, if they haven't paid for a previous fare. Are there any of those types of provisions in um, Well, for, for yellow cabs, no. The only, uh, the only thing, the only thing is you can't, uh, if a cab driver says the passenger, like, you know, threw up on my cab, okay? And we get that. I'm sure you get that, too. Like, they don't have to take them. But, I mean, if the per passenger, you know, wants to go to the Bronx, cab drivers take them to the Bronx. Now, what we've noticed is it almost doesn't matter, you know, there's times of the day where yellow cab drivers will not go to the Bronx. You know, busy times, they won't go. Um, the only other rule thing is that it, during a shift change or an hour before a shift change, a cab driver can refuse um, to take a passenger because they may be at the end of their shift and they have to bring the cab back. Um, but pretty much time, any time, you know, if they're in, that's kind of the, the privilege that you, you know, to get the privilege to drive, you have to take the responsibility. So you have to take somebody anywhere. Um, on the for hire side, Tariq, what are the rules? Can you stop? No. I guess if you, I don't know. I don't know what the, if, can you, can you, if your company knew that someone stiffed you, do you not have to pick them up again? I guess you would not pick them up again, right? That's, that's, that's totally, we never, no, we, we don't really have that issue on the for hire side. Uh, unless you disagree, I mean, am I wrong? We have an operator back there, so. We have. I mean, if you're getting a certain person that you recognize that they're stiffing you, uh, you don't have to pick up status on your computer and don't honor it. You request to be more for that. Yeah, I don't think. We do not discourage our drivers. Yeah. We do get complaints on, on the for hire side that, you know, 
passengers, you know, someone picked them up and they want to get paid, they wanted, the driver wants to get paid in advance, which they shouldn't, they have to get paid at the end of the trip. Um, that does happen every once in a while. Um, but whatever. I'm, I'm, no, I think I missed, yes, yes. Yeah, I was just curious. Oh, peace officers are all over the place. Uh, our corrections officers are considered peace officers. Um, we have uh, other types of inspectors from different departments make sometimes, some of them may be peace officers, not all of them. Some people at the buildings department or at the transportation department where I worked, we do an inspection of street cuts, you know, uh, you know, contractors cutting up the street. Some of those people may be peace officers. Um, the um, special patrolmen, like the people who issue tickets, ticket, the tick traffic enforcement agents are considered special patrolmen, but they may not all be peace officers. So it's a mix of, of people. We're not the, we're pretty, sm we're pretty small in the, in the, the peace officers are pretty big, pretty big universe. And, and the salary range is pretty big on them too. So corrections officers does a lot better than our typical inspector. Yes. Well, I mean, I think it's in the psych, you know, obviously somebody who um, wants to come in and, uh, you know, you know, someone, and, and this is kind of hard to see, you know, initially, I think, um, who, who doesn't really have sort of a good customer service kind of ability, um, we probably would tell them, you know, you know if you really want to be a cop, Take the police exam. You want to be a correctional officer? Take, you know, we do we do enforcement, but we do it in a way that is you know we don't we don't carry weapons, so we try to make sure that you understand kind of what your role is. We don't want people going chasing after people. I mean, we do have lights and sirens in our cars, um, but we don't we don't do pursuits. You know, people who are like chasing after other cars, not a good scene. Just not not what we're about. Um, if there's somebody who violates the rules and runs, call the police. They deal with that. In the back, yes. What is it? Well, you can actually see there's two of them being demoed. There's, the, there's Verifone behind you, and there's CMT in front of you. Um, that's, that's basically the device in the cab uh, that we put in. Matt, when? 2007? 2008? Seven. Seven. Six, seven. Six, seven, right. I mean, bas basically, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a system of devices that, that allow the passenger to pay for the trip with a credit card if they want, uh, gives them some entertainment, you know, that they have a screen in the vehicle, um, and it also has a device and with the driver, we call a DIM, which we can send text messages to the driver about traffic or enforcement information that we need to tell them. You know, if, if we get a call from Yo-Yo Ma that he lost his cello, we did do that, right? Yes. Um, we could send a text, and he had his credit card receipt. We could check, Jesse could check for us. Uh, no, we can check. Um, I shouldn't pick on people, I'm sorry. Um, you know, we can check our system. It said, yes, this credit card was used on this trip from A to B. That was hack number 4A26. We can send a message to 4A26. Do you have this cello? You know, come back. Um, that arrangement is made between the driver, the owner of the medallion, and, and the, the providers. So I... You have to ask them what they're charging. I mean, that's kind of I mean, the setup. Uh, you know, I think I don't want to speak for those providers, but you know, it, it, it's, it's a two-part process. One, there's the equipment that's put into the cab, and also those providers take a percentage of the transactions of the credit card transactions. So they're they're you know there are opportunities for both. It's a revenue on both sides. We have access along with the owner of the medallion. So it's both. 
and we do not have access. When the driver is off duty, we do not have access to that information. We just have access while they're on, while they are providing service, we have access to the information. Uh, no, we don't. We don't. We don't. We, we don't tell our 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 the yellow uh, industry where to go. Obviously, um, if there are large events in any place in the city, we can through the DIM send text messages to drivers to say U.S. Open in Forest, you know, um, Flushing Meadow Park tonight. Need cabs. Um, but there's no, um, can't find, you know, we, we don't violate anybody for, for not going to the U.S. Open. That's not, that's not how we do our business. Um, so, any other questions? I hope I entertained you. But thank you for having me.